Hello everyone and welcome to the Sister K channel, episode number two and counting. I hope, I sincerely hope you are keeping safe, you know, washing your hands. Like my niece would say, you must take you must count until 10 crocodile because the soap kills the coronavirus. I hope you are sanitizing, etc. That you are wearing your mask, guys. Only when you absolutely have to go out, do stay at home if you can. And I hope you're also keeping warm. Ah, oh, the Cape Town winter is vicious at this time of the year. But we thank God that the seasons are changing because it's a testimony of his faithfulness. So in my last video, I told you my name, I told you my surname, I told you my marital status, status, is it status or status? But anyway, you know I'm married. I gave you my age and I told you that I would be hashtag telling my story. If you are watching this week, <laughs> if you are watching this week, uh, you are curious, you are adventurous. It's a good thing. I like you we have something in common in this video as with many other videos that are gonna come I will be letting you know a little bit more about myself don't worry it's not gonna be a long biography and I won't give you too many facts at once and they won't be in any chronological order after every video my aim is that you have something to think about and its aim should be to to help you to fulfill god's purpose for your life so let me start from the beginning i was born at Guigeto clinic in guagua for those who do not know guagua is in the free state province right guys the eastern the free state the eastern free state actually where it is if you want to be more specific but the eastern free state is on the border of the province kwazulu natal and the country lesotho and no free state is not synonymous with bloemfontein <laughs> bloemfontein is the capital city of the free state and it also happens to be the judicial capital of south africa learn something hey so as you can see now i'm based in cape town but i think it's important that i share where i come from um because one of these days i'll talk to you about how we shouldn't let where we come from uh define our destiny and how you can come from a desolate place or be born into desolate circumstances and still um flourish um so more about me i'm the second born of five siblings um with three girls and two boys the boys are younger the girls are older and i'm blessed in that uh, my mom and my dad mailing that day as they told us to call them i still fondly call them that mailing that they're still together by the grace of god and they are still alive and i also gained three parents when i got married so guys i'm so blessed and rich i've got five parents who are still alive it's awesome i tell you anyway Here's the story that I want to tell you. In 2008, I was 24 years old. Yes, I was. I was 24. I already had an honors degree. I was a certified financial planner. I was working at Momentum. And that was already my fourth corporate from when I started working and I started working in 2005. So my career was growing very rapidly. One day we'll talk about uh, being a woman in a corporate environment and the importance of having a strategy for growth and thriving and takeover and domination. Ne, future topic. So I'm this 24 year old who's independent and I'm sitting in my lounge alone. The TV is off and it's just me and my thoughts. And guess what? I get a thought. And the thought goes something like, God must really love me. 
he must be preserving me for something that is of great value he must have a purpose for my life there must be more to my life than what i am currently living for at the time i was a party girl i was in a relationship that i had absolutely no business being in I absolutely no business being in the like guys like no business being in my priorities were the next promotion more money so that i can take care of my family even better at least i was responsible guys yo i was a i was a i was a good sinner you know um my priorities were also having fun enjoying life you know sarah sarah whatever will be will be by the world standards and from a distance i was successful and i didn't have any issues i came from a good home i was educated and i was doing very well in my career and from a distance even in my relationships on the surface my life was together but honestly i knew that i was longing for something i was longing for something that i couldn't explain at the time so that night the thought continued and i reflected on my life i thought about all my schoolmates who had passed on because of hiv and aids i thought of all my friends from university who were good girls and good boys who were studying hard but were not doing so great academically um, i thought about some who graduated but were struggling to find jobs and i i, I thought to myself everything is going well in my life i mean if i enroll for a three-year program at varsity three years i graduate if i attend an interview definitely i'm getting the job so the only way not to tempt myself from changing jobs was to turn down interviews so i thought um it's not because i'm smart it's not because i'm making all the right decisions it must be because god loves me i didn't understand the grace of god at that time i just understood the love of god and i had the sense that god has a purpose for my life there was a reason why he was preserving me even when i wasn't making the right choices when i wasn't making the right decisions i had accepted christ in 2006 i think yeah yeah you see i don't even remember because i didn't commit to that decision and even after making that decision i was still not living right so at that point where i had an encounter with god i didn't know then it was an encounter i just thought ah, i had a thought but now i understand that on that day when god visited me i decided that i am going to get serious with god i want a deeper understanding of god i want a deeper relationship with god and i am committing to living a godly life and i want to find out my purpose for my life and ensure that i fulfill it for me i call this my beginning of purpose and finding purpose and fulfilling purpose because that is when my journey with god really started well continued let me say that's when it started because that's when i made a decision to be serious about it but obviously god was always with me but you know what i mean man. don't be technical anyway what are the three lessons that i'm leaving you with with the story of mine of sitting in my lounge and having a simple thought god loves me that god loves me and he must be pre preserving me for a purpose the first is the importance of having quiet time guys hey you must enjoy being a uh, by yourself not because you don't like people or you have nothing better to do but simply because it gives you an opportunity to be quiet and to hear God so be intentional and make time to be alone and when you are alone don't make noise 
and listen to things that are not edifying to the spirit maybe listen to gospel music if you don't want complete quietness okay listen to gospel music or a preaching or pray in tongues or just pray or just talk to god but just be in an environment where you allow yourself an opportunity to hear from god it's important if i wasn't sitting alone quiet on the day in 2008 i don't think i would have heard what god had to say on that day second lesson when god gives you a chance to realign your life with the purpose that he created you for my love take that opportunity you don't know if it's going to come again. And you'll never find out what you are missing out on if you don't take that opportunity. I honestly, I like, I get scared if I think about where I would be if I did not take that opportunity that God gave me to realign my life with his people. So, lesson number two. When God visits and he gives you an opportunity to come back, like if you are listening to this opportunity as an example, it's an opportunity to come back. There is a, a lane that you should be walking in, a life that is set out specifically for you. And if you are not living that life, if you are not in that lane, come back. Third thing that I hope you remember from my little story. Even if you forget the story, don't forget the lesson. Nay. Having a relationship with God through accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. It's, an, it's the most important decision that you will ever make in your life. And it's the first critical decision that you must make if you are ever to find out what your purpose is. Anything that is made in order to find out why it was made, you have to consult the manufacturer. Whether you read the, what do you call those pamphlets that comes with a, a, um, an appliance when you buy it as an example, you have to consult it. I'll make you a a silly example of something that I did. I bought a washing machine like a long time ago. I, I, I had it for years. I had it for years. I have ne instruction manual. Ah, I remember. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I had never read the instruction manual because it was easy, quite easy to operate. You know, I could see or cycle also. Uh, no, no, it was easy. And I had been using that washing machine for years until about uh a year or so ago when i visited my older sister's house and she had a similar machine but a bigger one and her machine had a button that said air dry so when the 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 cycle of the washing and the spinning was completed um she i i, I she said put on air dry so that it will dry quicker it's like air dry and I put on air dry and after the cycle of air drying was completed, the clothes were almost dry. And then when I came back to my house, I looked at my machine. Guys, I had had the machine for over six years. For the first time, I discovered that my machine also had an air dry functionality. And remember, I stay in Cape Town. Ne? You can imagine what happens with my washing in winter. And I could have made my life so much easier. I had it. But because I never consulted the manufacturer, I didn't know it had that functionality. So imagine yourself now, if you are not connected with God to find out your purpose. You are definitely, most definitely living below what God intended when he created you. And it's simple to start a relationship with God. It starts with you believing in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, that he died for your sins, that he was crucified, that he was buried, that he arose on the third day, that he ascended into heaven and is sitting at the right hand of the Father, and that he will return for judgment. 
you believe it with your heart you confess it with your mouth and you become born again for those of you who don't know what it means to be born again i've done a special video just for you look for the link below um the video is how to be born again that's my story for this video for today in case you are still wondering about the title of the video <laughs> I know some of you thought I was going to talk about my husband. No. <laughs> it's my love story of Christ and I. That's how I met Christ and I started walking with him. I hope you found today's video useful and that it gives you something to think about that will hopefully bring you a step closer to discovering your purpose or if you already know what your purpose is just to inspire you to keep pursuing purpose comment share share the video with others subscribe do all those wonderful things that people do guy youtube or and you can ask me questions you can ask me questions um please also follow me on my instagram page my instagram handle is sister k underscore foundation and my facebook page is at sister k foundation till next time this is your sister sister k reminding you you are loved you are precious and you matter to god I am a South Africanist and I'm doing it for SA. Till next time, stay blessed.